Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I said this many times, the truth will come out slowly, but eventually will. Why? Uh, not only because you can't hold it down, but even the interests uh, that held it down will uh, find it beneficial at one point to use the truth. I think right now, uh, the, how should I put it? Free mass media, the one in the West, only we have uh, uh, media that's free and objective, uh, start reporting about the Ukrainian media reports, which are, as we know, fudged. Some of them. Some of them are truthful. The same as everywhere else. It's just the, uh, the quantity. How much? I mean, you can have 90% in the, on this issue, you can have 10% on the same issue. You can have 90% in the United States of America, you can have, and I'm lumped them all together, I'm talking about the, the mainstream mass media, which is owned by the shareholders, which are some groups, uh, some interest with big, big bucks, not by you or I. Therefore, they will be very objective. So what do we have here? We have an article from CNN. And this article from CNN will tell us that, will acknowledge that Russia is making daily tactical gains in eastern Ukraine as concerns swirl around Ukrainian military reporting. Well, I think the Ukrainians control who can go on the front line and report. And then they're going to look over and see how the reports are made. Remember the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians. The people in charge of Ukraine, I was about to say something else with a P, starting with a P. Um, they, uh, remember, they, uh, they uh, not, not arrested, they convicted, if you remember, four or five people, Ukrainians, who if you remember, I can't remember when the hell it was, maybe a year, a year ago, in April, May, they filmed the, when they had the Patriot systems deployed in May, last year or something, they uh, videotaped and they posted the attack, the missile attack by the Russians, allegedly uh, destroying one Patriot system. And these guys said, no, 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 but the video showed explosion and so on. Now they got, I think, five years or four years, they had a conviction on um, house arrest. Um, they were free, you know, I think they're on parole right now. One of them was a woman that I know of, not personally. So, besides the fact, this is how they control, only we can say what's going on. And you guys just uh, take it from us, uh, from the military. Okay, all right. So, let me show you this article coming from CNN. Russia is making daily tactical gains in eastern Ukraine as concerns swirl around Ukrainian military reporting. That's not a big surprise here whatsoever. It's just the timing and the fact that CNN tells us about Ukrainian military reporting. They don't want to say it. You know, as it uh, the words that should be like lie or spinning uh, like they do. Vladimir Putin's forces. No, that's the Russian Federation's uh, defensive forces. Can you call them that way? No. You know why? Because they attacked Ukraine unprovoked. All right. That's how the story goes. Have made further gains in at least three locations along the Eastern Front in Ukraine, including for the first time in several months an advance in the northern Kharkiv region, highlighting against Kiev's need for ammunition and weapons from the United States and uh, other allies. No, it's not ammunition, it's manpower. M too many people died, that's what it is. If you can send over their weapons, if you don't have hands and arms to operate them and feet to, no, you can't do shit. Russia's tactical advances are now daily. Got that? And reflect the new tempo <laughs> on the battlefield since the fall of the industrial town of Avdivka. Oh, I thought it was just a symbolic Russian garbage, Avdivka. See, I told you many times, these guys don't give you the information. I gave you always the example with the iPad and the glasses. I'm not going to tell you the glasses, how much they cost. I will just tell you they're fantastic, they're boo boo boo, they're ga 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 boo, but I will avoid the cost. In the article regarding the glasses, I will explain everything but the cost. And then in another article, another imbecile is going to talk about the iPad. I say, oh yeah, but, but you need the glasses and you need these glasses. These glasses are very good and they cost $3,000. Bang. So you found the price. 
you find the price of this one that was not given to you in the article that really was talking about it. The same here. When they tell you about, oh, Avdivka, it's just a symbolic win. And you find out here, wait a minute, uh, the industrial town of Divka, and then you find out it's not really a symbolic, uh, f you know, town. It just really opens the door for uh, West to liberate, conquer, however you want to call it, the entire Donetsk Oblast, and maybe go and take care of other people a little bit northwest. The gains are generally modest, so they can't be, you know, full mouthed. They have to go like. Uh, generally modest. From, yes, they, they, they are actually, but I think they're um, making sure that they are not stabbed in the back. Uh, from a few hundred meters of territory to perhaps kilometer at most. How do you know that from the Ukrainians? <laughs> you just talk about them right here. <laughs> Is that from you? That's how you got the information? But they are usually taking place in several locations at once. Meanwhile, Ukraine's losses are being accompanied by criticism from influential military bloggers and analysts of the armed forces' official battlefield updates. Uh, one of the Russia's main efforts is in the Donetsk region. Ukraine's pop up up Military bloggers on both sides have reported that Russia forces have crossed a water course and taken control of the settlements of Semenivka and Berdych. I covered that in a video before I uploaded this one, which Ukraine Army Chief Alexander Stilsky confirmed in a post on Telegram on Sunday. Russia had deployed up to four brigades in offensive operations in the area. Oh, we're gonna read further, aren't we? All right. So, again, the withdrawal in Donetsk operation continues. Bloggers, the Ukrainian bloggers, the military they call them, uh, start saying. And then they talk about um, the liberation of the factory plant would actually mean the fall of Krasnohorivka fortifications as the northern outskirts of the settlements are private buildings which will, will be too difficult to defend if the plant is lost. So they talk about um, partly, yes, the, we gotta tell the truth, which is the Russians are really advancing. Elsewhere, about 180 kilometers, 112 miles to the north, Russian forces have also achieved their first successes in more, almost three months along the part of the front line that cuts into Kharkiv region. A Ukrainian army spokesman described Russian forces there as having become significantly more active. That's why they say dynamics, active, uh, tight, tense. These are the euphemisms. Over the past day, whilst Deep State assessed a Russian advance of between one and two kilometers into the villages of Kilslivka. Overall, the front Lines in the regions having among the most stable. Yeah, okay. Criticism of military communications. Deep State in a post on Telegram published a graphic video of a Russian soldier's be soldier being killed in a drone strike in the village of Solovione. But use the clip to argue that isolated incidents can mask the bigger picture, which is a, which it accuses the military of doing as well and i'm quoting deep state you can watch with blah 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 forever the video over russian soldiers being turned to pieces end quote deep state wrote and i'm quoting again but nearly there is a nearby there is another location that requires attention moscovitz moscovitz calmly moving around the village keeping it under control the Ukraine Defense Forces inflict fire damage on them, and one can repeat at least a billion times on a national television that two-thirds of the village is under the control of the Ukrainian military, but the picture of reality is completely different. Completely different. So basically what they say, you're lied to. Why? Well, you're not going to tell the truth in a uh, you know, state of war. Hey, we're losing. You create panic, and people will break out. You know, uh, organizations, uh, military units, people will just uh, surrender en masse. So you don't want to do that. So I understand that one. Why are, why are the Ukrainians now, or at least Deep State, and not only Deep State, that's another one that they use in this article. And uh, they talk about, yeah, here you show me the little little gains, little gains. Uh, one guy was blah, blah, blah. But then the, the guys took over a village. Which one is it? But this is the way these guys here make the, the news. They focus on a special event uh, or special um how should i put it a small thing they make it big and the big picture they make it unimportant if you're familiar with uh, that guy 
uh, in his book, that guy, in his book, 1920s, he talked about how media, how newspapers in Vienna in those times uh, were making the news. He said, from a very obscure individual, they can make that person the most uh, respectable and fantastic individual in two weeks. And from the most important issue of the country, they can just make it like un unimportant. The same. They can talk here about whatever they want to talk about Ukraine, about the protests, about Palestine, about this and that. But they're, not, they're going to ignore the border. They're going to ignore the state. They're going to ignore the infrastructure, the schools. They will ignore that. Why? Make it from what's really important something small, trivial, and from a little thing. Oh, that guy cut his balls. <gasps> Historic moment. I don't give a fuck what he cut. But hey, they make that important. You see this, this thing with the pronouns and all that? How many people are involved in this? In, let's say, in the total US population? 1%? 1%. If, if, if. And it's everywhere, man. Let's change all the bathrooms for 1%. What about the other 99%? Do they have a say? And so on. These are just examples. So now these guys are starting to turn around and say, hey, you give, I think it's kind of frustration and panic when they are like, tell us the truth, or at least the people must uh, know the truth eventually. Why? I think the situation is almost in free fall, I would say. Therefore, they're like, uh, by lying, you're just going to create a false... Uh, um, how to go state or false Im impression of uh, confidence and calm when actually the enemy is at the gate. Uh, it says this is a dynamic change in a situation. Some positions change hands several times a day, which give rise to an ambiguous understanding of the situation. Well, this is uh, Sirsky. The situation at the front has escalated. Trying to seize the strategic initiative and break through the front line, the enemy has concentrated its main efforts in several directions, creating a significant advance in forces and means. So the whole article talks about how the, rush, the bloggers, the ones that are military bloggers, they get the information from the communication between and whatever the military, um, um, the military statements are. And now they say, what are you talking about? We have other evidence. And they, it's not that they didn't have it before. But you know, you push in, in one direction and ignore that, you promote a certain kind of view. But then you say, well, it doesn't do uh, us any good anymore. We have to really say the right things because it's an urgent matter. If you just pretend, you're going to be encircled and destroyed. Uh, and then after that, you say you won. Like NATO will do, Agapon, after they lose in Ukraine. After they lose in Ukraine, they will claim they somehow they won. Why? Because they stopped the Russians from invading the Europe. That's going to be the narrative. That's how NATO wins. They say, ah, our goal actually was to pre protect all Europe and our way, Western way of life. Like Russia is not a Western way of life. I think Russia actually, how should I put it, um, is the one that protects the Western civilization more than these imbeciles, the, the perverts. Okay, more than these guys, they want, I think they want to destroy it. And it's not them, it's the guys behind them that really hate the guts of the Western civilization. Why? Because the Western civilization fucked them up the whole 3,000 years back. And uh, they have a problem with this one. And after they're done with this one, no, Mesopotamia and all those were okay. The Egypt, they fucked it up. So now they try with this one and move on to the next one. Next one, next one. Because they are not creators of civilizations, they are destroyers of why we have an inferiority complex, having an inferiority complex instead of saying, you know what, I think I'm worse than that guy, what the fuck can I do? Well, the healthy uh, civilization will say, well, improve yourself, train, get better, and maybe you can surpass that guy, You're gonna be better. No, 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 no. The other one, the other, I don't want to call it philosophy, garbage, mentality is, no, no, how about I make that guy disappear, therefore it's going to be only me to pick from, and I'm going to be shining like a burning bush in a fucking desert. Enough. All right, my friends, here it is, they have to tell the truth. They have to tell the truth because otherwise, you know, uh, uh, the panic, sometimes you need panic. If you just, oh, when do you have the exam, Emil? Tomorrow, man, tomorrow is the exam. Tomorrow, and you're so calm, yeah, I mean, really, a sense of urgency.
So again, NATO will claim victory. Why? Because they will crea create a mirage that the Russians wanted to invade Europe and destroy Europe and America and so on. So say, see, we stopped them. They didn't even care about that. Don't kill Russians in the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland and other countries, and you will not have a problem with the Russians. Kill them and then you're going to have a big problem. The Russians will, uh, you know, if you do that, then the Russians will uh, retaliate. Clear. Like any other country will do that. Healthy country. Weasels will not do that. Let their compatriots being slaughtered wherever they are. And they will just say, uh, Al Capone, what should I do? Hold it. Hold it. But I've been holding it from what? For almost 70 years. Hold it. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I think uh, Ukraine um, will, it's in the, I don't want to say really, really early age, uh, early stage of collapsing, but uh, the things are not going its way whatsoever. And the Americans know they don't have manpower. They're probably going to push their military in, in order to stop the Russian invasion of our way of life. Our way of life that they change and turn it into their way of life. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.